The explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant was a catastrophe that shook the whole world on April 26, 1986. The explosion that occurred at the number 4 nuclear reactor at 1.23 a.m. Kiev time destroyed the nuclear reactor completely and turned Ukraine's unique nature reserve fund into a burial ground for radioactive substances. More than 300,000 people had to leave their homes because of the radiation hazard. That was how the Chernobyl exclusion exclusion zone emerged, off limits for visitors and divided into two administered territories, the specialized 10 kilometer zone and the 30 kilometer zone. The first legal tour to the exclusion zone was organized in 1998 and in 2009, the Chernobyl NPP was named by Forbes the most exotic place for tourism on earth. The zone is visited by more than 70,000 people from 93 countries every year. In this episode, we're going to tell you about some eerie and at the same time, incredible places that attract tourists from all over the world, as well as some places where no tourist and even no man at all has ever set foot. Number 1. Luzerne Azure Swimming Pool this indoor swimming pool is situated in the ghost town of Pripyat on Sportivnaya Street. It's quite difficult to find your way to Luzerne without a guide as the street has turned into an impenetrable jungle. It's hard to believe that the facility, now overgrown and destroyed by time, used to be a part of the town inhabitants' peaceful, carefree lives. The swimming pool was built in 1970 and was very well equipped for a small town with a population of 50,000. Luzerne's uniqueness lies in the fact that it was operated for 12 years after the accident. Its territory was believed to be the cleanest place in the exclusion zone. There were five swim lanes for the nuclear plant workers and the accident liquidators to work out and relax. The swimming pool was closed only after the liquidation works at the Chernobyl NPP were stopped. This monument of tragedy has become a legend. Luzerne is featured in several movies and is a location in a few popular computer games. Number 2. The Cooling Pond the artificial reservoir intended for cooling of power units number one and number two was constructed in 1976 on the right bank of the Pripyat River. Its area initially amounted to 12.7 square kilometers. When power units number three and four were launched, the pond basin was expanded to 22.9 square kilometers, which is approximately as large as 3,000 football fields. The unique pond was contaminated with fragments of the reactor and radioactive dust at the moment of the explosion. Therefore, in 2014, it was decided to lower the level of water in order to clean it from the radioactive fragments. The loss of water resulted in the cooling reservoir dividing into several lakes where a unique ecosystem developed due to the presence of radionuclides in the bottom sediments. <laughs> the research laboratory ECOT Center was opened at the premises of a fishery. Scientists from all over the world conduct research here on the influence of radiation on the flora and fauna. During the warm months, the cooling reservoir attracts numerous tourists with the opportunity to feed the huge catfish. Their size is believed to have been influenced by radiation, but in actual fact, the stories of mutants living in the pond are just a myth. Contaminated animals die fast and do not produce offspring, and the catfish can only reach giant size due to the ban on catching them. The Ecot Center station workers' greatest pride is their pet catfish named Gosha, who loves being stroked and fed by hand. The Discovery Channel became interested in the stories of radioactive catfish as well. One of the River Monsters episodes was filmed in the exclusion zone in 2012, where the show host Jeremy Wade was able to catch a Chernobyl catfish. Number 3. The Red Forest no one knows how large the Chernobyl exclusion zone could have become if not for the pine forest standing in the way of the radioactive dust. It was at their expense that the pines held up tens of tons of deadly substances emitted into the air by the nuclear fire. The high radiation dose colored the pine needles brownish red, hence the name Red Forest. According to the liquidators, at nights they often saw the dead trees glow in the dark. The pines burnt in the cold radioactive flame absorbed a radiation dose of 
5,000 to 10,000 rads and 202 square kilometers of thick woods turned into a radioactive waste burial site. Due to the high contamination level, the Red Forest was cut down and buried in the soil in 1986 to 1988. The work should have been performed with the use of specialized engineer tanks and lead-coated bulldozers, but as the workers were not aware of the contamination hazard, they often cut down the trees by hand with practically no protective gear on. In spite of this fact, 500 hectares of the affected area have already been restored. There are serious fires occurring in the territory all the time, but the district is still believed to be the world's most contaminated site. Number 4. The Duga-1 Radio Location Station there's a futuristic structure towering over the deserted military town of Chernobyl too. The Duga-1 over-the-horizon radio location station can be seen from any point in the exclusion zone. The metal structure is 150 meters high and 460 meters long. In spite of that, the facility was not marked on a single map and was believed to be the most top-secret place both in Chernobyl and in the entire Soviet Union. Brought into service on July 4th, 1976, Duga-1 didn't remain a mystery for the other countries for long as the installation produced continuous radio interference all over the world. Slight knocking could be heard even in common radio sets, for which reason the station was nicknamed the Russian Woodpecker. The construction of the mega panel required 280,000 tons of metal. The total amount of expenses was about 7 billion Soviet rubles. There were different theories regarding the purpose of the Russian Woodpecker. The US Department of Defense for a long time believed that the installation was an experimental weapon of the USSR and the enormous dimensions of Duga-1 and the 10 pulses transmitted per second scared people. The powerful radar of the missile launch detection system was seriously considered as a psychotronic weapon or a weather manipulation installation. Nowadays, this place is popular among tourists as well as among hunters. Hunters, in their turn, use the antenna as a sightseeing platform, and some fans of extreme sports even use it for bungee jumping. Number 5 Radioactive Machines Graveyard all kinds of machines were used to rectify the consequences of the accident at the Chernobyl NPP. The machines exposed to radioactive contamination had to undergo specialized sanitary treatment all the time. There was a kind of a washing plant located on the outskirts of the Rosoka village, the 416 inhabitants of which had been evacuated on May 7, 1986. After the end of the liquidation work, the Rosoka site became a graveyard for 1,350 pieces of radioactive equipment. 50 acres of land had 10 heavy Heavy helicopters, MI-8 and MI-6, engineer tanks, armored personnel carriers, chemical reconnaissance vehicles, fire trucks and ambulance cars, robotized bulldozers, excavators, and evacuation buses awaiting their fate. The total value of the equipment stored there was about $46 million worth back in 1986. The Rosoka site was officially closed down in the end of 2012. The machines with the most intensive background radiation were transferred to the Buryakovka Radioactive Waste burial site located in the 10 kilometer zone. The burial ground has 30 trenches intended for burying solid, non-combustible waste and designed to last for up to 300 years. Slightly or moderately contaminated machines were disposed of or cut for scrap. According to some data, there are not only the 1,145 containers with radioactive waste buried in the pioneer wall of the old sarcophagus, but also some extremely hazardous pieces of equipment. By the way, the Rosoka site became the prototype of the junkyard location in the Stalker computer game. Number 6. The Volkov Air Defense Missile System this quiet nook is rarely visited by tourists. There's not a single road that would lead to the small military unit in the thick woods. The Volkov Air Defense Missile System is located in the 10-kilometer exclusion zone. The top secret facility was put into service in 1962 and served for air attack protection for the Chernobyl NPP and Duga-1, so there's little information available about it. Volkov can hit targets moving at 1,430 miles per hour and is still used in a number of countries. The barracks, remnants of the transport and load vehicles, the garages, the large missile bunker, the platforms for missile systems, and the air raid shelter still remain in the territory of the abandoned military unit. The equipment was evacuated immediately after the accident. The Volkov system also became the prototype of the Jupiter plant vicinity location in the Stalker computer game. Number 7. Medical Sanitary Unit Number 126 in Pripyat 
The first injured people were brought to the medical sanitary unit number 126 in Pripyat three hours after the accident at the fourth power unit. Six firefighters and 22 nuclear power plant employees stayed at the hospital complex for less than a day and were urgently transported to Kiev and then radiological clinic number six in Moscow. But the most horrible place is not the abandoned operating room or the maternity ward with baby cribs, but the small basement with a narrow corridor about 60 to 70 meters long and several rooms of 10 to 15 square meters in area. The contaminated clothes, footwear, and bed linen of the first accident victims were thrown into those rooms. In one of the rooms, deep within the basement, there's the famous firefighter's boot that radiates more than 30 millirentgen, which is 1,000 times higher than the permissible level. The medical sanitary unit itself is open for tourists, but it is strictly prohibited to enter the basement. The guides keep mum about the facility in order to not arouse unwanted interest in the dangerous place. But photos and videos of the basement appeared on the internet anyway, posted by hunters. Illegal visitors rushed into the medical sanitary unit for an adrenaline rush and hoping to find scary artifacts. The main entrance to the basement was buried under tons of sand in 2016, but that doesn't stop the thrill seekers either. There are beaten paths in the sand already, as well as near the basement window. Number 8. The Pulsey Hotel the roof of the famous Pulsey Hotel commands a view of the town where nature's getting the upper hand in the war against radiation. Despite the dense vegetation, Pripyat still retains its appearance of a Soviet town of the late 1980s. The hotel itself was built in 1970 for the guests of the town and the visitors of the nuclear power plant. The energetic community center was built next to the building, alongside with the amusement park that was never opened. As the hotel was centrally placed and had a direct view over the Chernobyl NPP, Pulsey was chosen to accommodate the command center coordinating the operation of the helicopters during the rectification of the accident's consequences. The dosimetric control station was also positioned in the hotel building, and the rooms were occupied by the liquidators. The building was abandoned afterwards, and the legendary roof became a must-see place. There's a birch tree now in the place of the command center as a symbol of the life being revived. The furnishings are partially preserved in many of the rooms, and there are the famous Hiroshima Shadows graffiti painted on the building itself. Nowadays, the emergency state of the hotel doesn't let the tourists ascend to the viewing platform and it is officially prohibited to enter the building. Number 9. The Amusement Park the Pripyat Amusement Park has become an iconic place for tourists. The broken swing boats, the merry-go-round with the collapsed hobby horses, the bumper cars ride with the cars overgrown with moss makes the landscape really look post-apocalyptic. But the greatest attraction for the visitors is the rusty Ferris wheel. The authorities are planning to close the park to visitors before too long due to the risk of its collapse. Unfortunately, the inhabitants of Pripyat did not get a chance to enjoy the festive atmosphere of the amusement park. It was to be opened for the first time on May 1st, 1987. The Chernobyl accident happened on April 26th, just four days prior to the opening date. Number 10. The Elephant's Foot at the moment of the thermal explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, the temperature in the accident area reached as high as 2,500 to 2,700 degrees Celsius. The things that happened in the burning reactor can only be seen in post-apocalyptic movies. The scorching hot lava of nuclear fuel burnt through everything in its way. Moving at a speed of 30 centimeters per hour, the deadly river flowed out of the reactor cavity into sub-reactor room number 305. Absorbing the melted metal structures, concrete, and graphite, the flow followed corridor number 217 and made it to the suppression pool where the radioactive lava streamed down the wall forming a bizarre mass and froze forever. The burl was nicknamed the elephant's foot for its shape. The agglomeration of corium was discovered by the expedition from the Kurchatov Institute of Atomic Energy only in December 1986. The scientists feared that the scorching hot fuel could permeate through the soil and it was also necessary to assess how much toxic substance still remained in the destroyed reactor. At the moment when it was discovered, the elephant's foot emitted a lethal dose of radiation. It was too dangerous to enter the room. The researchers used a toy horse on wheels with a dosimeter attached to it to perform the measurements. The instruments read off scale, some of them were off the charts, and the congealed mass emitted more than 10,000 rentgens per hour. To take a sample of the substance was a hard task as well. Electric drills mounted on self-propelled carriers were not able to drill a hole and often became disabled due to the 
extremely high level of radiation. In order to obtain a sample of the material, it was decided to shoot the elephant's foot with an assault rifle. The operation was performed by an experienced sniper, Captain Sirocco, and recorded on video. The frames from the film were then used in a BBC movie. The obtained samples confirmed that the stalactite was composed of 10% uranium, zirconium, a whole package of nuclear fuel radionuclides, molten silicon dioxide, and some other chemicals. The corium was named Chernobylite. The weight of the Earth's most toxic waste is approximately 11 tons. The area of its base is 1.7 meters squared. The stalactite is about 3 meters high. The scientists believe that the elephant's foot is going to emit radiation for many centuries to come. Number 11. The Bridge the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is popular both with the computer game developers, movie producers, photographers, and with the authors of all sorts of myths. There are the deserted towns and villages of the Exclusion Zone, the roads thickly grown with high grass and trees, the abandoned houses overgrown with moss, the rusty vehicles, and among these there are herds of wild horses, large groups of boars, and solitary proud moose. The Dead Zone is full of life, in actual fact, and heats the imagination. Nature has escaped the concrete cat Captivity here and exists in its pristine form. But in order to see this peculiar mixture, one would have to cross the legendary bridge on the way to Pripyat. Guides often tell the story where the curious town inhabitants stood on the bridge watching the one kilometer high pillar of fire shooting up from the fourth power unit. Many of them died within a few days after such a toxic sight. Due to this myth, it was nicknamed the Bridge of Death. The structure is situated over the railroad tracks on the Chernobyl Lelev Kopachi Highway. The town and the Chernobyl NPP are are really well within view from this spot, but the Bridge of Death was guarded by militia squads on the night when the reactor exploded, therefore this story is not true. Despite all the horrible consequences, the Chernobyl accident put an end to the superpowers' nuclear confrontation and made the countries combine their efforts to fight against the consequences of the explosion. The construction of the sarcophagus that covered the power unit helped prevent further release of radiation. The shelter was built in 206 days. Its service life is only 40 years. Therefore, the construction of a new sarcophagus was started in 2007. In 2016, the new shelter encased the fourth power unit securely and covered the old sarcophagus. The new sarcophagus is 110 meters high, higher than the Statue of Liberty in New York. The structure is 165 meters long and 257 meters wide, and the weight of the Ark is 36,200 tons, making the new sarcophagus the Earth's largest movable above-ground structure. According to the design engineers, the new shelter will serve for more than 100 years, giving us and our descendants enough time to decide how to dispose of all the radioactive products. Well, that's all for now. We hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching it.